The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. It's time to update Stupid Town. Noted Jet hater Chris Canty is at it again. We'll talk about what he said and why it's all wrong. It's the Jake Asman Show. Let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jet Green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jet. It's the Jake Asman Show. Uh, here we go, Jets fans. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We are approaching 37,000 subs, and I want to thank all of you for being a part of this ride. If you missed it earlier, really fun show in the morning. We talked about the interview Aaron Rodgers did where he reflected back on his first season with the Jets. So check that out when you're done watching this show, this video right now. We begin with some absolute just stupidity from ESPN host Chris Canty, who obviously can't stand the New York Jets. This has been the case for a while, but last week, he called Aaron Rodgers a cancer. If you missed it, this was Canty just the other day. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. So that was Canty last week. Now, earlier on his radio show, Unsportsmanlike, which you can listen to every weekday morning on ESPN Radio, Chris Canty was asked by Evan Cohen, about the Jets and their number 10 pick, and Canty somehow said something almost as stupid as calling Aaron Rodgers a cancer. There is a team in the top 10 that you believe should take a quarterback that we all know will not take a quarterback. Who yeah. is that team? That's the New York Jets. Why? Uh, well, 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 they have a quarterback going into his age 40 season coming off of an Achilles, and their contingency plan for said quarterback is Tyrod Taylor, and while I'll acknowledge that that is leaps and bounds better than their contingency plan last year in Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon, that is the lowest of bars to clear. I just don't understand why the viability of the 2024 Jets has to hinge on Aaron Rodgers being a guy that we haven't seen in three years, which is playing at an MVP level. Like That was the last time that Aaron Rodgers was good. Think about it. The last season in Green Bay from A-Rod, it wasn't great. They had a week 18 winning in game against the Detroit Lions who had nothing to play for, and Rodgers fell flat on his face. I just don't understand the logic of the New York Jets if it comes to making sure that the franchise lays the groundwork to have sustained success, that has an opportunity to end the longest playoff drought in North American team sports. I don't get why they don't have a better backup plan in place for Aaron Rodgers. It just makes no sense to me, especially when you have a top 10 pick in a quarterback rich draft. It makes no sense to you because you refuse to point out the obvious. Chris, this franchise, this regime, they're all on the hot seat. They drafted Zach Wilson. He sucked. So they should reach for a quarterback in the top 10 to try and end the playoff drought, that makes no sense. If your goal is to end the playoff drought, you take a player at 10 that can help you in 2024, not a third-string quarterback, which is what that player would be if the Jets took, let's say, in this scenario, maybe the fourth or the fifth, fifth quarterback off the board. Their plans to take someone on day two or day three of the draft to sit and learn behind Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. Their contingency plan might be the best backup quarterback in the league. And you don't understand why the Jets have operated the way they have this year? Chris, they won seven games without Rodgers last year. More than your crummy-ass Giants. God, stop talking about the Jets and Aaron Rodgers like he sucks, like this team went 2-15. and 15. It's a joke. It is a joke. Saying Rodgers wasn't even good 
his last time we saw him play. Chris, go look at his stats and compare it to any Jet quarterback in the last 20 years. It'd be the second or third greatest season. And that was with a broken thumb on his throwing hand and playing through a rib injury. It's been three years since he's won the MVP. No, it hasn't. It's been three full years. They signed Tyrod Taylor. He's the best available backup that you could have had in that spot. You should know because he's better than your quarterback, Daniel Jones. We watched it last year. Oh, my God. I mean, you don't understand why the Jets season is viable on MVP Rodgers. It's viable on him being competent. They can make the playoffs, and as you said, end the longest playoff drought in North American sports by not taking a quarterback at 10 who's not going to play. By giving Aaron Rodgers as many weapons or protection as possible, which is what they've tried to do. That's why they added three bona fide offensive linemen to their starting lineup. That's why they signed Mike Williams. Oh, you want to help Rodgers? How about have the best defense in the league, Chris? How's Hassan Reddick taste? What a bunch of bull crap by Chris Canty there. Bull crap. And you keep bringing up the one Aaron Rodgers game against the Lions at the end of the 2022 season. Turns out that Lions team was pretty good as they just played in the NFC Championship game, Chris. It turns out that Lions team had a lot to play for under Dan Campbell, having a winning season, going into the following year on a high note, which they built into a trip to the NFC title game after they won their division for the first time in a long time. You don't understand the Jets' thought process on building around Rodgers, why would they take the fourth or fifth best quarterback at number 10 when this regime drafted Zach Wilson? You think they get to pick another quarterback in the top 10 when Aaron Rodgers is 40? This is your opportunity. Keep telling everyone how bad Rodgers was his last year in Green Bay. Go watch the highlights, Jet fans. It's not hard. You know the Aaron Rodgers that cooked the Miami Dolphins on Christmas Day? Remember that? Some of the throws he made in that game? The idea that Aaron Rodgers was not good in 2022 is total BS. Was he the MVP of the league for the second straight year? No. Was he still a top 12 quarterback in football? Yeah, he was. And he's got better weapons on the Jets, a better defense on the Jets. You know what You know what Aaron Rodgers' record is, Chris? When it, the Packers' defense allowed 20 points or less? 80 and 10 in his career. The Jets' defense for a two-year sample size now has allowed 19 points per game. The last two years combined under 20, Chris, because obviously you, you don't seem to understand simple things based on your comments, calling Aaron Rodgers a cancer, which is disgusting. And then saying that they should take a quarterback at 10 in a quarterback rich draft. Did we not say that about the 2021 class? They all suck besides Trevor Lawrence, who's OK. You're going to sit here and you're going to try and act like. They should take a third string quarterback at 10 because that's what that guy would be. You want to talk about your long-term future if you're a Jet fan. Who cares? You can't have it both ways, Chris. Should they try and make the playoffs this year or think about their long-term future? Because your argument sucks. It makes no sense. It's ass backwards. All right? You want to end the longest uh, playoff drought in North American sports. That's, that's what you said. Those are your words. So take a third-string quarterback, 10th overall. How does that make any sense? If your argument is, blow the whole thing up, rebuild, then that's a legitimate take that we can have a conversation about. It makes no sense, but that's at least an argument to taking a quarterback at 10 if there's someone they love. But you're saying they to help end the longest playoff drought in sports, they should take a rookie quarterback at 10. If that guy had to play, he would suck. That would mean Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Tyrod Taylor got hurt. The season's over at that point. A third-string rookie quarterback who's the fourth or fifth guy taken is not going to help the Jets make the playoffs, Chris. Stop hating on the Jets. We get it. Your Giants are trash. We understand. They stink. We understand. Daniel Jones can't hold Aaron Rodgers' jockstrap. We understand. But stop with the BS that Rodgers is a cancer. Stop with the BS that Aaron Rodgers wasn't good as last year in Green Bay. That's just not true. If Aaron Rodgers is average with the Jets, this is a team that's won seven games the last two years with Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, Trevor Simeon, Joe Flacco, Mike White having to play games. If they had Aaron Rodgers this past year, hell, if they had Tyrod Taylor this past year, I could find three more wins, and this is a 10-7 and 7 team. 
So your argument is they should take a quarterback so they could try and end the longest playoff drought in sports. That makes no sense. That is so moronic. I can't even fathom you actually believe that. You're too smart of a guy, Chris. There's no way you actually believe this illogical take that you put out on national radio this morning. There's no way. It's impossible to actually feel that way. They should draft the quarterback at 10 so they can make the playoffs this year. They take a quarterback at 10. That guy's a third stringer. Makes no sense. Your argument makes no sense. Who should they take at 10, Chris? They should take Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix. How did it work the last time this GM took a quarterback in the first round? He gets another pick? You don't understand why the, the Jets are trying to build around Rodgers? And the beginning of your answer is so silly. You, you say you don't understand why the Jets' viability is based around MVP Rodgers. No, it's not. It's based around can you be better than the trash that has played quarterback for most of this franchise's history? That's what it's based around. Can you go out there and take a team that has a stacked roster on both sides of the ball before the draft and elevate a seven-win team to a 10 or 11-win team, maybe win the division, but certainly make the playoffs and go on a run? That's the goal. What have the Bills done, Chris? What have the Dolphins done, Chris? You tell me. And you mean to tell me the Jets, who have a top-five defense, top-five special teams, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, three bona fide additions to their O-line to go with the two they already had in place that actually are good in Joe Tittman and Elijah Vera Tucker? You mean to tell me that you take a quarterback at 10? Keep telling me how bad Aaron Rodgers was in 2022, by the way. Aaron Rodgers in 2022, if he goes out there and has the same exact stats with the Jets, he goes out there and he puts up, if we look up his exact stats for you, Chris, because we like accuracy on the show. Last time we saw Aaron Rodgers, 3,700 yards, 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Yeah, he wasn't that good. He stinks. You know where that would rank in Jet history? It's one of the greatest seasons ever, certainly in the last 20 years. But, of course, Aaron Rodgers lost to the Lions in his last game as a Packer quarterback, so that means he sucks. You know how stupid that is to make it about one game? Tom Brady lost his ever his last game in New England. He threw a pick six on his final pass as a Patriot. What were your thoughts on Brady going to Tampa, or you just don't hate Brady? I'm sure you didn't call him a cancer. Oh, well, you know, I could be nice to Brady. We beat him in a Super Bowl. Oh, I mean, it's just lazy, man. Tom Brady's last pass was a pick six. People said he was washed. He goes to Tampa. They won a Super Bowl. And Aaron Rodgers is three years younger than Brady was, four years younger than Brady was that season. It, to me, it's just, it is the height of laziness and it just does not stop. They should take a quarterback at 10. Almost as dumb as calling Aaron Rodgers a cancer. Despite what anyone says about the guy publicly, his teammates, current and former, coaches, current and former. I, I mean, just a joke. They should take a quarterback at 10 so they can make the playoffs. How ridiculous is that they should take a quarterback at 10 so that guy could be a third stringer you acknowledge in the rant that they got tyrod taylor now you're trying to downplay tyrod taylor why because he's not a giant or he's better than daniel jones i mean please chris stop it all right stop it with the hate for rogers and the jets you don't understand why they're building around rogers why would this regime Take a quarterback at 10 when they need to win this year or they're out of a job. Do we really think the Jets are that far away, Chris? You actually believe that? They won seven games last year with Zach Wilson playing most of their games. Tim Boyle started two games. A winning record when Trevor Simeon started. And you want me to sit here and try and entertain you seriously believing they should take a mother effing quarterback at 10. You want me to sit here and believe that? Yeah. Okay. I'll play along, not into the shadow realm you go. That's the problem with Aaron Rodgers. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park. And I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. Or here's another idea that's going to be very controversial. You could shut the fuck up. You could draft a quarterback at 10, Jet fans, if you want to make the playoffs, right? 
You want to end the longest playoff drought in sports, take a third string quarterback, 10th overall. But then he says he's thinking about the long term. So which is it, Chris? Make the playoffs this year or think about the long term? Oh, that's right. Your words make no sense because you hate Aaron Rodgers as you were exposed last week for calling a good guy, someone beloved by his teammates, a cancer. I mean, think about that. You know how devastating cancer is to even like throw that around about a guy who's got no indication whatsoever he's a bad teammate, bad guy, anything. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'll go back to something we played on the show last week. All right. The same day Chris Canty opened his mouth. And he came out and he said that Aaron Rodgers is a cancer. That he's fooled us Jet fans. That he doesn't understand anything the Jets have done this offseason. One of Aaron Rodgers' former teammates, MVS, Valdez Scantling, was on the Zach Gelb show on CBS Sports Radio and said this about the guy that Chris Canty has called a cancer. So many people pretend to know Aaron Rodgers and there's a perception that's painted of him. Yeah. Since you were a teammate of him, of his, and you got to know him when you were a little bit younger, entering the league as he was so established. Just what kind of teammate is Aaron? Man, he's one of the greatest teammates you'll ever find. He cares more about his teammates than about the game of football. You know, I think that's something that people don't really understand because uh, they get this perception of him that he's, you know, this whatever, this you know, diva or that he's all about himself, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. Um, Aaron has taught me so much stuff, you know, on the field and off the field. Um, he's, you know, a big advocate of just, you know, your mental health and, and how you approach, you know, life, not even just football and, you know, the things that he's gone through you know, over the years, he shares that and kind of just lets you know, like, hey, I'm, I'm human too. You know, I may throw this football really, really well, uh, but I'm human too. And, you know, I have bad days, I have good days. And just for him to, you know, be able to, to open that up and be a great friend to me, not even just a teammate, but a great friend to me, um, I'm forever indebted to him. You know, he's one of the guys that'll text me, you know, and say, hey, I'm proud of you, you know, even if it's, you know, completely random, you know, just, you know, hey, I'm reaching out to you, love you, bro. Like, those are things, you know, like, like I said, I haven't been his teammate in, you know, two, three years now, and, you know, we still have that same relationship. Oh, you, you, you don't say. This guy is a cancer that's metastasized throughout the entire building in Florham Park, and I don't know why Jets fans can't see it. Uh, you don't know why. Maybe because you're blind, Chris. All right, we're not blind as Jet fans. Maybe you are because you're just blinded by your hatred for the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, whatever it is. Complete joke. Complete joke. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Shout out to all the Asmaniacs. If you think what Chris Canty said was completely illogical and asinine, Make sure you hit the like button. That sends the right message, baby. Tyrod, or sorry, sorry, City Burt starts us off with a super chat. Here we go. Tyrod's injury prone. It's still possible Zach starts games for us this year. Please tell me he won't be on the final roster because I can't watch him. City Burt, I don't know how many times I need to scream this to people. Zach Wilson will not be on the Jets. It is over. Done. He will not play for the Jets. It's not happening. So we could stop pretending that there's any possibility of it happening because it's not. Andrew writes in with a super chat. That's being stupid just to be stupid. Yeah, it just let's take a quarterback at 10 so the guy could be a third string because we're trying to make the playoffs this year. When our GM is on the hot seat, our coach is on the hot seat because the GM drafted one of the greatest busts in the history of the NFL. That makes a lot of sense. I keep talking about the Jets, Chris, like they're, you know, the 2-15 and 15 Carolina Panthers. They won more games than your crummy-ass Giants team. Where are the Giants picking in this draft, Chris? Oh, four spots ahead of the Jets? I wonder why. Oh, they lost to Zach Wilson and the Jets last year? Yeah, they did. Reese says, Jake, keep cooking his ass on the grill. Don't even flip them. Just let them fry hard. It's just lazy, man. I'm just, I am so sick of people who just, don't know what they're talking about or say things clearly out of just hatred for a specific team or a player. It's so lazy, man. Luppy says, does he know how insensitive the word cancer is to people who have lost people to this? I Look, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. If you're going to call someone a cancer, they better have done a lot wrong. Not be one of the best teammates multiple guys on the record have said. Or what we have seen. 
How, how come we don't bring up the fact, Chris, that Aaron Rodgers took the largest pay cut in pro sports history? How come it's not mentioned that he gave back $35 million to the Jets and had a lower cap hit than Zach Wilson last season? Doesn't fit the narrative. That's why. Comments, questions, super chats, fire them off. That's how we pay the bills around here. Shout out to everyone for their support. Let's get to some calls now. Gus Buster Hotline. And let's go to Weed the People. He, you know what? We could use some weed to calm everyone down. What's up, Weed? <laughs> Oh, what's up, man? How you doing today? Weed. R E L A S. Jake, as a Jets fan, you understand. Everybody's going to hate us. They're always going to hate. They're just a bunch of bitches. That's all it is. <laughs> That's all it is. The guy is so stupid, calling him a cancer and all that shit. Multiple people have said what a great dude he is. And the dude does fucking ayahuasca. How could you hate them? How could you hate him? I know. He's great. I, mean, I, I want you and Rogers to get together and do some ayahuasca together. I've been DMing him on on Twitter forever, man. I'm waiting for him to get back to me. <laughs> I told him I got some good Georgia Waska. We, yep. we, we can lock ourselves in a dark room and hang out. It'd be great. I love the uh, I, I love the, uh, the the setup you got going in there, Weed. It looks like you're really hot box in the place. I'm doing my best, Jake. Doing my best. Weed. So all we can do is try. That's right. You're a legend, Weed. I'm glad we got Weed the People back in the mix. One of the all-time greats, folks. Hit the like button if you're tuned in. I'll give you a call that's going to fire the people up. We head international for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us live from France is our pal Craig in Australia. Hello, Craig. Oh, he's in the Czech Republic now. Oh, baby. Mate, how are you? How are you? I don't even know where I am. I'm drinking Czech beer. <laughs> in some town called Ulamush, somewhere in the Czech Republic. And um, I've just burned all my work colleagues. Um, all they do, mate, all day here is drink beer. That is all they do. Um, <laughs> I, haven't seen, I haven't seen any Hennessy, though. Um, I, need to, I need to introduce it. Have you got the Hennessy there? Uh, cheers to you, Craig. Cheers, my brother. Ugh. Unbelievable. This is the most beautiful place, by the way. I um, highly recommend, if you can, if you get here. Um, now, Chris Canty, I don't, I, I'm not totally aware of him, but I've determined at this point he's like the world's biggest uh, oxygen thief and um, he needs to be shadow realmed, but I see you've already done that. Um, so he's just got to be ignored. Uh, you know, what a complete, uh, a complete tosser, you know, and a Jets hater. And um, what are you going to do about these people? You know, it's just, uh, just like just there's no point he can make. Like, it's just like they should take a quarterback at 10 is his argument. And then it's to end the playoff. Quarterback game. at 10. That Ugh. makes no sense. And their plans to take a quarterback on day three to think about their long term, try and develop a guy. They, they're they in a win now window right now. Like, they, like they almost all got fired last year. <laughs> like, I, it's like it, to like actually say out loud, you don't understand what their plan has been this offseason just tells me. You don't believe anything you're saying, or you might be the dumbest football analyst ever. And I know Chris is not a dumb guy, so it's like just pure hatred. I mean, is he is his like follow you know followership down or something? Is that what it is? Because like that's the only thing you can explain spastic comments like this. It's like that guy City Bert about Zach Wilson. I don't want him to come back. What do you mean uh, you don't want him to come back? The guy cancelled himself. Uh, before the Miami game, he said, I don't want to play anymore. And then we got him back, and then he got a hard hit, and he took himself off. I don't believe for a minute that he was injured for the rest of that game against Miami. He said, oh, no, oh, no, no, I, like, I, I didn't want to do it, but I came back, but now no, I've got a bump on the head, I'm out of here. So he's not coming back. That's not happening. You know, we, and we don't, we don't need him. We don't need to think about him. Um, so, you know, whatever, but... Look, the thing that's keeping me going at this point, apart from our amazing roster, is in a few short weeks, mate, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. We are going to Yankee Stadium, and then we've got dinner at one of uh, Manhattan's best steakhouses, short walk from your apartment. It's going to be epic. All that's right, what I'm ready. Right. I'm ready, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you out with a little King Lowski. I'm so fired up. Yeah. Is Lowski, is Lowski coming to dinner? <laughs> you know, he's got an open invite if he wants to make the trip. Oh, he does. He's got an open invite to Australia, to the Czech Republic, and any anywhere he wants to go. So, <laughs> I love Cheers, it, Craig, man. I'll let you. Man. I'll let you get onto some other calls. I love everyone. Take care, Craig. Travel safe, my man. Always great to hear from you. As Thanks, you, brother. As, 
Craig is truly like the Dos Equis guy. He's the most interesting man in the world. He's everywhere in the world. Cheers to Craig. Shout out to all our international fans. UK, Australia, New Zealand. I had someone reach out from Mexico um, just last week that DM me on Instagram. I mean, they're everywhere. We got a lot of Canadian fans that watch the show. Keep rolling with the calls right now. Before we do that, reminder, draft Megacast, folks, live from Sports Heaven, largest indoor sports book in the country, Circa Resort and Casino. Book your stay the next time you're going to Vegas. Circa has something for everyone. They're incredible sports book, indoor and outdoor. Stadium Swim speaks for itself. If you have not watched an NFL Sunday or a college football Saturday at one of these two sports books, you are missing out. Plus, Barry Steakhouse is phenomenal. Circa offers some of the best restaurants you're going to find in all of Vegas. So check it out. Book your stay at Circa the next time you head to Vegas. CircaLasVegas.com. And make sure you watch our mega cast all three days of the NFL draft live from Thursday through Saturday of the draft week. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Shout out to Circa for being our draft sponsor. All right. Comments, questions, super chats, more calls right now. Let's go to Bill. He's up next. Hello, Bill. Jake, how are you? Bill, I'm great. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I think you're letting this Chris Canty guy bother you a little too much, Jake. He has like three uh, brain cells left uh, <laughs> since getting hit so much in football. But this is the same guy, remember, that said that the five most overrated players fell was – um. He was Saquon Barkley, Dak Prescott, Kristen McCaffrey, Khalil Mack, and then there was one other guy. I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but there was another one that he uh, he did. So he's had some pretty terrible takes over the years. But but listen, I, I love the show and I love the uh, the New York Jets fans. Yeah, so I just wanted to read a couple of our statements real quick uh, on a couple of our, our, our great fans. And now now, have you ever read? Um, Lane Turner, I don't know if you know, he has a, a newspaper. It's called the Green and White Gazette. Have you ever read the uh, the articles he's he's written? Who who's the author? In the Lane Lane the Train Kerner. Oh, he wrote uh, an article in the Green and White Gazette. It says um, it was just yesterday. It says Dim Dimitri Knobel, a highly touted prospect out of Penn State, was selected by the New York Jets with the 10th overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. Knobel, known for his exceptional athleticism and versatility, is expected to make an immediate impact on the Jets' already loaded defense. His selection marks a significant addition to the Jets' roster and signals their commitment to strengthening their defense for the upcoming season. I, I, I thought that was just a, a great, great article. Very insightful by, by, uh, by Lane. Bill, thank you for the call, Bill. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, Knobel didn't go to Penn State. He went to college. On the 2022 draft pick, <laughs> the pick goes to Knobel out of college. Yeah! He didn't go to Penn State. He went to college. D-Rock, Super Chat, cuts the line here as we get back to some comments and questions from the audience. All Jets fans should troll Canty on Twitter. Well, if that's what you want to do, D-Rock, go for it. Someone said he made a burner account to defend himself, but that's un uh, unsubstantiated. Sam with a Super Chat. He checks in. Thank you, Sam. We need to take a receiver at 10. It's time to see what Aaron could do with a legit weapon. What do you think? What do you mean time to see what he could do? He's Aaron Rodgers. He's won four MVPs. I, I know what he could do. <laughs> I want to make his life easier. So, yeah, I would take a receiver at 10 if Adunze's there, sure. But I know what he could do. But I, if you want to go weapon at 10, if it's a receiver, I'm in. If it's Bowers, take the lineman or trade back and take Bowers if you're going to do it that way. Dark Knight Steve, a.k.a. our secret agent. Hot take for the sake of a hot take. It's a week AM show. Chris Canty's on and they need controversial content for clicks. It's just so silly. Take a quarterback at 10 if they want to make the playoffs. 
Take a third string quarterback at 10 to help the 2024 Jets make the playoffs. Brilliant, Chris. Thank you for that one. Sonny with a big time super chat. $10 to the Chipotle fund. Added to the Chipotle fund. Jake Canty's a clown desperate for clicks. Also, will you be having a meetup in New York City anytime soon? Let's go Jets and Knobel for life. Yes to the New York City meetup. I don't have details on that yet, but that, that is definitely the plan at some point. So be on the lookout for that. I'll pick a bar. We'll do a big Jake Asman uh, get together. But I gotta get, I gotta get a feel for the uh, surroundings where because I gotta figure out some spots. But we we will be doing meetups. We'll do a Jersey meetup, Long Island, and the city. That is the plan. Michael says, which ex teammate has ever said AR was a bad guy or a bad teammate? You can't find him. Doesn't fit the narrative, though. That's the problem. Darnell is up next on the show. What's up, Darnell? What's going on, Jake? Hey, Darnell. First, first time caller, long time listener. Hey. Matt. You touched on a lot of things about Chris Canty, so I ain't got nothing to add to that. Uh, you explained yourself well on how his take didn't make no sense. I'm an Aaron Rodgers fan, not necessarily a Jets fan, even though I was born and raised in New York. I wasn't really into football like that, but Aaron Rodgers, my guy. So what I have to say is, I hope he really rise from the ashes like the Phoenix he said he would. And win not one, at least two more Super Bowls add to his legacy, and I think he'll become the GOAT. I'll tell you what. I, I think there's an argument to be made, Darnell. I appreciate the uh, the call. If if he wins one with the Jets, I think he solidifies himself as a top five quarterback of all time. He might already be there. Some might have him there. I think it's indisputable if he wins with the Jets. Because I think one Super Bowl with the Jets is more than another Super Bowl if he won it in Green Bay. Like one Super Bowl with the Jets, I think, is the equivalent of like three for pretty much most franchises. Like if you win with the Lions or the Browns, it's the equivalent, you know, the equivalency of winning with the Jets, that type of thing. So I, I do think he can improve his legacy from that standpoint. Now, what you're talking about is two more. He wins two more. He probably could enter the GOAT conversation. I don't think anyone's going to be able to surpass Brady from a resume standpoint. But if you say Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback you ever watched, and he has three Super Bowls to show for it and four MVPs, we tell the fight people on that. You got to at least argue it. Like people will still point to Brady because of the championships and the overall re resume. But at their best, you could argue Rodgers at his very best is the best ever. Like, his, his, like I think it was uh, Jordan Palmer did a great video on this. He's like, one quarterback playing at their very best, who would you take? Like, everyone's playing at their A level. You could argue it's Rodgers. I mean, some of his seasons speak for itself. I mean, it's insane. Amsterdam Jet Fan is up next. We're going international again, baby. What's up, Amsterdam Jet Fan? We're everywhere now. Hi, Craig in Czech over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Chris Canty is – that. I mean – He's also like so fired up about it. It's kind of scary almost. I know. I don't <laughs> like, know why. What, he doing? <laughs> what did Rogers do to him or like a family member or something? Like it's well, crazy. Exactly. I almost want to say like, you know, we should make it uh, mandatory for him and, and for a bunch of other Aaron haters to listen to that podcast for two hours, um, you know, as, as sort of mandatory, uh, you know, education. I just did as well. I saw that you did an item on it earlier today or yesterday. Um, but I don't know how you come away with that and not understand that this is a really good human being that like cares about his people and his friends and his players. And, and it's quite amazing. Uh, you know, I, so I, the bad rap he gets, I mean, we've talked about it a bunch, but um, the, the thing that really doesn't make any sense about his take is, is, Right now, everybody's all of a sudden talking about our roster being so good, which is also, you know, something I'm not quite used to, <laughs> right? I mean, there's talk of what, uh, being the third best in the AFC, uh, 
I mean, I would I could argue argue that. And and you know, why has it never been that good? Well, even we've had good defenses, but we've never had a quarterback really yeah. to speak of. He of talks that about level, Aaron. Right? Yeah, you're right, man. He talks about yeah. Aaron Rodgers like he's Zach Wilson. It's like Chris, you do realize this team won seven games two straight years with by far, in a way, the worst quarterback play in football. Never right. gets brought up though. Doesn't fit. His, doesn't fit his BS narrative. No, and and if you have the 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 third best roster in the in the in the conference, then of course you should go and go for it and get a playmaker or get someone that's going to make a difference. Makes no sense to take the QB. But you know, I've wanted to call in for a couple of weeks because of the perspective that I think maybe a lot of people hate Jet fans or something, but don't understand what we've been through <laughs> uh, for all of our lives. You know. Um, if I were to ask you who's the best QB of all time of the Jets, right? Your answer would be it's Joe Namath. Yep. Right. I mean, and you know, I've never seen Joe Namath play. I'm 52 years old. <laughs> you know, um, if I ask you who's the second best QB ever to play for the Jets, there's a debate. It's probably Kenny O. But I mean, you could you could say Chad, you could say Vinny, like Sanchez yeah. is probably in the top five, and he wasn't that great of a quarterback. So that tells you all you need to know. So 40 year old Aaron Rodgers. How, where does he stand versus the second best quarterback ever to play for our team? Well, look, if he has a, his average season, uh, we're talking about every single season stat record going to him. 4,000 yards. Name it did it once. Uh, th 31 touchdowns. Fitz has that record. Like, if Rodgers throws 32 touchdowns, which he does all the time, and we're talking about a guy who's going to like probably be the second best quarterback of exactly. all time for this franchise after one year. And so my point is, None of our lifetimes, but not my lifetime, not your lifetime, have we seen this. We are going to most likely see something and witness something that we haven't seen in our entire lifetimes. And that is so damn special, the potential of that. Um, you know, and I think people kind of lose lose that some somewhere along the line. Like this is something we have never seen before. My my childhood, my first memory is you know, Richard Todd throwing an interception at the goal line against the Buffalo Bills in the 1981 wild card game. <laughs> you know, that's about as Jetsian as it gets, right? Uh, and and we've never experienced anything quite like that. So let us, you know, let us have that special moment, please. <laughs> it was supposed to be last year and we were yeah. robbing it. And now you got to hope that the Super Bowl DVD or Blu-ray or whatever we're on these days, it starts with him going down. And then here we are. It will all be worth it if they win a championship. All the hell we've been through if they could win that championship. And, you know, and if that's true that we have the third best roster in the in the conference, which I think is probably accurate, um, can someone please give Joe Douglas some credit for this? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, we need to win. But, I mean, he – if – if, if, if. But if we do get a reasonable uh, output from this team – uh, you know, the, the which is more likely than not, it's going to be a good season. We're most likely going to get to the playoffs and we'll see how it goes from there. But we probably have the best, you know, setup uh, that any GM has ever done. If that all happens, I think. Rick, so. excellent call, man. Stay safe in Amsterdam. All right. Maybe, maybe you and Craig are on the same time zone right now. How about that? Yep. I can go shout to him. I love it. I love a great call. Love our international call. We might have to do like a first time caller uh, show and an only international caller show. Michael writes in with a super chat. WFAN out. Jake Asman show in. Thanks, Jake. Well, thank you for listening, Michael. I appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of Craig, Craig from Australia said, I want people to be happy today. Ignore Chris Canty's nonsense because we're gifting five memberships. Thank you, Craig. Money, 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 money. Following five people just became as maniacs, courtesy of our pal Craig in Australia, Hater Ali, Love Bites, Motivational Means Media, and Joey Bad. Oh, and Jay Lepselter, congratulations. You guys now have access to all the emojis for the live show and the comments, all the shows I release early to channel members. All the extra stuff we put up for members, you now have access to that. And also, you get, an, you get a custom badge next to your name. I've added some new badges. You no longer just have the standard badge. Each badge now represents how long you've been a channel member. So I made my own badges. So that, that debuted with the show as well. Shout out to Craig. What a, what a gentleman. Drinking beer in the Czech Republic and 
spending some hard-earned cash on fellow Asmaniacs. Speaking of hard-earned cash, shout-out to our Patreon members. Want to give some love to our most recent Patreon subscriber, Jason Meltzer, who signed up for the year earlier today and saved 15% by doing so. Also want to give love to William Walton, who signed up yesterday for the Patreon as well. Thank you both for your support. You get the show in podcast form and the best perk, Discord access when you become a Patreon member. We're doing a giveaway. The Masters start tomorrow. Gus Buster Umbrella will be there, of course. It's the number one umbrella in all of golf. If you follow me on Instagram, at Jake Asman, I add your name to a list where we will randomly select a winner to win a Gus Buster Umbrella, the official umbrella for golf fans everywhere. GusBuster.com, promo code Asman at checkout. So you could get your, your promo code Jake at checkout. Excuse me. Don't even know, I don't even know my own promo code. Promo code Jake at checkout so you get 15% off your umbrellas. But follow me on Instagram at Jake Asman, and you will get yourself a Gus Buster if you are selected. More calls right now. Ricky and why we go to next. Hello, Ricky. Hey, how's it going, Jake? Uh, you know what? Uh, these people that like the hate on Rodgers, I, I love the way they always say, oh, well, his last year in Green Bay. Are what, you, you mean Dr. the year when Ricky? Devante was gone? And Ricky? Do I not have a camera? Hey, you just, it just, we have a black hole right now, Ricky. Uh, and he's gone. Ricky, call back. We'll get you back on. I guess you, you were, you were spending too much time defending Aaron Rodgers that your camera thought you were Aaron Rodgers. Ladies and gentlemen, a donation of all donations has just been made, folks. Let's hit it. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, yo. Dark Knight Steve has just come through with 10 Asmaniac memberships for the following people. Holy crap, Steve. So kind of you, my man. Jimbo, Adam S., Bob DiMucci, Tom D., Dana Russell, Bobblenick, Drew Balcom, uh, LX Jet Fan XL, John, who that dude, me, all are now Asmaniacs because you were gifted a membership by the great. Secret agent, Dark Knight, Steve. We love you, Steve. Appreciate your support. Steve and Craig coming through. 15 Asmaniac memberships gifted today. Just incredible. Nothing brings this fan base together quite like dumbass takes by Chris Canty. I'll give you something else that brings this fan base together. One of our favorites is on the line right now, Bobby Midnight. Hello, Bobby. Hey, how you doing, Jake? Bobby. You, remember, you know that guy who mentioned he went to the game in 1981? I and do, my yeah. brother went in that at that game. I remember that game. Wow. At Shea Stadium, it was, I think, or Shea Stadium. How about that, Bobby? You go back a long way with the Jets. I'm an old man. Remember that. But I want to give 27, you 27, Bobby. I'm 56 in August. Wow. I'm, be 56. I'm an old man. I am go I'm going to rant like you, Jake. I'm going to rant over Chris Canty. He stinks. He was on three different teams, right? For 10 years. Guess how many sacks he got? 23. Ooh, exciting. 23 <laughs> sacks for 10 years. He wow, you're a great player. He 10 stinks. years. 23 sacks. He stinks. I think he should sh shut his pie he hole stinks. up and be quiet. They should gag him all the time he's on the air. I think he stinks. I think Aaron Rodgers is a he great stinks. player. Like you said, he took a $35 million cut for the Jets. And, you know, I am I, I'm a Giant fan, and I heard what you say the Giants think they do. But I am pissed off at Chris Canty because I don't like, I like Aaron Rodgers. I don't like this Chris Canty. I think they should throw him off the air. He stinks. Bobby Midnight. That was your best rant I've heard out of you, Bobby. Well done, my man. Look, I'm not going to say they should throw him off the air. Chris is entitled to his opinion. It's a dumb one, but he's entitled to it. But I think there's a clear bias and hatred towards the Jets and Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't know how anyone could have that take. 
Addison has just stepped up. Wow, this is unreal. The channel memberships are flowing. Like the bad takes coming out of Chris Canty's mouth. Unreal. The following five people just became as maniacs, courtesy of Addison M. Shout out to Addison M. Let's get the list of names that he gifted to. Andrew McAllister, Paul Flance, NY Jet Superfan, Weege, and Jason One. You guys are all now as maniacs, courtesy of Addison. Well done, my man. Well done. <laughs> Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. V8 the Great is up next. Hello, V8. What's up? Chris, can't he get more than one sack a season? Bro, Jake is just, is getting crazy, man. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers did to this man. What do you think he did? I really would love to know. I, like, looked into their history. I'm like, did, like, Aaron Rodgers' teams dominate Chris Candy teams? There was, like, nothing there. Like, they they barely played. Like, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's very bizarre. I don't get it. Maybe it's just a giant, you know, inferiority complexion he has. Yeah, God willing, we do win the Super Bowl. Believe it in my heart, we do. What do you think is going to be the excuse for all these Jet haters? Oh, you know, of course they should win. Oh, the Rodgers was sacked. He should win. But when Brady did it, you see how it's just different. It's it's Tom Brady. He should, you yeah. know. Just it just infuriating. But you know, Jake, love the show. Keep doing your thing. I'm gonna always tune into you. Love it. Hey, V8, appreciate the kind words, man. Shout out to our most recent Patreon member, ladies and gentlemen. Ron Meltzer just signed up for the entire year. Ron, thank you so much for your support. Get in our Discord. And chop it up with everyone in there. That's awesome. Uh, let's keep rolling here. We got some more super chats. Craig writes in. Also, I have Mike Envy. <laughs> Craig, check it in. I don't know how much that is in check dollars. Twenty check dollars. What is? It? Anyone? Anyone have the uh, the dollar system calculator? But I appreciate you, Craig. Can't wait to see you in uh, less than a month now. Spaniel Johnson with a super chat for us. The offense has to run through Brees Hall. Does not need to be the Aaron show. Every weapon is complimentary. Rodgers will be deadly off play action and RPO. Don't tell that to Canty, who said that the Jets are relying on MVP Rodgers to bail them out this year, which is completely untrue. They won seven games without him, Chris. Brees Hall had 1,600 yards with no offensive line coming off a torn ACL. Garrett Wilson had over, had over a thousand yards. They don't need MVP Rodgers. They already have a, an elite defense. Might be the best in the league after adding Hassan Reddick. They already have an elite special teams group led by a Pro Bowl punter and Thomas Morstead and a Pro Bowl kicker and Greg Zerline. You should know how important kicking is. Remember Graham Gano missed a kick that lost the game for your Giants against the Jets, Chris? Remember that one? Guess who hit every clutch kick that day? Oh, Greg Zerline did. Guess who was AFC Special Teams Player of the Week after the Jets beat your Giants, Chris? Oh, it was Thomas Morstead. I remember. I was there. More calls right now, folks. A lot of people want in on the conversation, so we'll try and rattle off as many as we can. Let's go to Darren. Hello, Darren. Hey, I'm going to be quick, Jake. I got a <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I got a question. We know uh, Roger's been in the, the league a long time, but – I'm wondering, what do you think? Do you think Roger's career lasts longer or Canty's career lasts longer at this point? I mean, you know, last couple of years of Roger's career versus Canty being fired next week. He's not going to get fired, Darren, but I, 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 I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> All right, but everybody stole my, stole my thing. How about a little Henny for me, brother? Anything for you, Darren, other than <laughs> – uh, but I, I still hate your basketball team and – I hope I'm wearing guys... a Jets hat right now. I didn't even put the the. T oh, hold on. There's a Heat hat right here. No, nope, that, that's Ooh. it. That goodbye, Darren. I'll do the shot without you. No need no Miami Heat BS on this show. Uh, you guys injured Randall. I'll never forgive you. Dark Knight Steve Super Chat with knowledge in the Super Chat. U.S. the check conversion is 85 cents USD. Well, there you go. What does Dark Knight Steve not know? Where does Craig not travel to? And where does Dark Knight Steve not go to? Not know. 
I mean, the depth of his knowledge, man. Speaking of depth of great knowledge, when it comes to Puerto Rican history, there's really nobody better. When it comes to Italian history, there's nobody worse. It's time for another V-Man call. Hopefully he no sleeping. Adios mio. <laughs> V-Man up next. Hello, v hey, hey, Jay, what's up? Honestly, maybe we need to get like a doll. We need to get a mannequin and we need to ask Chris Canty like, to for him to point on the mannequin where Aaron Rodgers heard him. Because it's just absolutely ridiculous. In fact, actually right here with my grandfather. And I asked him um, in Spanish. So I said, uh, uh, Chris Canty es una mierda. He said, si. Sí, which is just, is Chris Canty crap? Yeah. Yeah. There, you can see, let's see if you can get him to say it again. How do you say it in Italian? Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't know. I don't speak it. Like I said, I don't have to. Really, like, there he is. Senor, Chris Canty es una mierda. Si? Yeah. yeah. He said, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, Chris Canty is mierda. Yeah. V-Man, I, 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 I have no words. That's the end of that V-Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> I mean, what is there to say, folks? <laughs> I mean, I swear V-Man's a real person. It's, it's unreal. <laughs> oh my god V-Man you're a legend I never change a shout out to your grandpa tell him we all say hello Sam writes in with a super chat for us thank you Sam I appreciate this which NFL rookie quarterback has won the Super Bowl in the NFL I doubt Canty believes what he says which rookie quarterback leads teams to the playoffs that's rare All right, what CJ Stroud did was historic they want to make the playoffs. So Chris Canty says they should take a quarterback at 10 so that guy could be a third stringer. That makes a ton of sense, Chris. Great, great take. Brilliant. Craig checks in. Check exchange rate stinks. Please rant it. I'll give you one of these. He stinks. The check exchange rate stinks. More calls right now. Ricky's back from the darkness retreat. Hello, Ricky. And Ricky's still in the hey, dark district. Oh, he's out. He's out. There we go. Okay, there uh, we go. <laughs> and he's frozen. Ricky, call back. Your internet is worse than B-Man's calls lately. Uh, actually, that's not true. B-Man makes me laugh anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Knight Steve has just done it again, folks. He is making it rain. Dark Knight Steve, five more memberships. Holy crap. Oh my God! He sticks. He not sticks. you, Dark Knight. Steve. No, I meant to hit this button. <laughs> Show me the money. Show me the money. Money, money, money. Uh. Yeah, love it, Dark Knight Steve. The following five people just became as maniacs, courtesy of Dark Knight Steve. Shane Daniels, Bacon Tetris. Howie from Jets HQ, Joe Campanelli, and Q-Rocks Games. Make sure you thank your Lord and Savior, Dark Knight Steve. Unbelievable. Tremendous. Tremendous. More calls right now. Mr. Bonesy's on the hotline. We go to him next. Hello, Bones. Jake, my brother. Jake, my brother. Bones, I might, be, uh, I might be getting dinner on Madison Ave tonight, but you're not in the shoe store. When? What did you say today? I have a I have dinner plans tonight, but I you're not uh, here. I'm off today. You know, you and Mr. Bob uh Mr. Bonesy and Bobby thought I was working today. Bobby gave me another awesome call at the job. <laughs> Spoke to uh, you know, some of my coworkers. After the call, they called me up. They're like, Yo, Bob, uh, yo, Bonesy, what the hell are you doing on the days you're here, bro? <laughs> I'm like, so don't Bobby worry. Midnight is just calling your store randomly to talk to you. <laughs> I got to give Bobby my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I, I texted him in Discord my schedule, so he knows the days I'm working. To make sure <laughs> we link up, you know. But uh, they were like, "Yo, Bonesy, what are you doing on these uh, days you're working?" I'm like, "I'm just selling the Mo shoes, baby. I'm just selling the Mo shoes." That's incredible. That's hilarious. Uh. I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but I'm the one that told Canty to do all this stuff, man. 
It's me. I'm the one telling him to piss Rogers off. Rogers is going to come out with a, like he. This is amazing. I hope that this shit keeps going on. He is the biggest. He's the biggest guy when it comes to you telling him he can't do something. He's gonna do it. So I I, I love this. I love everything pissing this guy off. Why does my hat brim look so big on camera? It looks like it's like an odd shaped hat. It's just a normal Knicks hat. Well, anyway, uh, that's all I really got. Just uh, just excited to see when people are getting Rogers wild up because uh, he's going to come out this year. And we, I love the smoke. We can handle the smoke. And oh, last I want to say, Gary needs to be stopped. <laughs> Gary is on a mission to argue the other point of anything you say. <laughs> so if it, if it, it could, it could be anything. It could, it doesn't even matter. Gary could care less what we're talking about. He's just, he, did you see what he said in the chat? He said, you guys, you guys are acting real feminine just because he's uh, attacking your favorite player. Grow up. It's like Gary, man, you're too much brother. He, he really is like, this role that we've given him, like this, like devil's advocate enemy, he just he loves it. He's he. I, I hope it's getting him more clicks or something on his, you know, his boxing shit because he is going hard in the paint. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Hashtag respect, Gary. Bozy, you're the you're the man. I'm Mr. Bozy's an all timer. Look, the bottom line, Gary is. Knockouts don't matter if you're landed of jabs. you can do music. That's it. That's it. I'll, I'll take Gary's takes over Chris Canty's takes any day of the week, though. Let me tell you. Gary's actually watching the show. He goes, dinner plans with a lady friend at Jake Asman. Yeah. You, you didn't talk to your mom? Bang. Got him. Got him. I'll be here all week, guys. Oh, Thanks. brother. This guy stinks. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have right now is like a membership gift off between two titans in the industry. Dark Knight Steve has gifted five, uh, 15 total memberships so far during the show. And Craig, normally in Australia, now in the Czech Republic, he's like, oh, hold on a second. I got memberships to give too. Craig gifted five and then. Gifted 10. They have each gifted 15 memberships during this show. So without further ado, we say thank you to Craig. Every Asmaniac who just got a membership, all 10 of you, should be saying ch -ch to Craig from Australia because he once again is making it rain for this fan base, which is the best in all sports. Money, 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 money. <laughs> Uh, just unbelievable what's happening here. So let's give some shout outs here. The following as maniacs just became memberships courtesy of our pal Craig, normally in Australia, but currently in the Czech Republic. Sorry, not sorry. Jets Johnny, TP Jet, Dylan Bar 4, Anthony Cook, Slim Azuma, Sam Mazzaro, Jeff C, Nate A. You guys are now officially as maniacs. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout out to Craig. Unreal. We'll give this guy a chance to defend himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary up next. Hello, Gary. What's going on, Jake? I, I feel like, I mean, I, I got to call back. I, I appreciate the love, Bonesy, but no, I don't say things to bait people. I'm not Hawk. I don't sit here and defend Zach Wilson to get a rise out of people. I say things that I think are true, right? Like I'm going to say this because I think it's true. If you were just choosing sides of any quarterback and assuming everyone's at their best, the best quarterback I ever saw, either A-Rod or Mahomes. Now, they're not greater than Brady, but he was just choosing sides, right? Like, Griffey's the best baseball player I ever saw. He's not, he didn't have the greatest career, but he's just the best, right? Yeah. Okay. That, that's, like, that's my point about Rodgers. But, like, with, with, with Bonesy, I appreciate it, but I don't say things to get a reaction out of people. I don't say things to be devil's advocate. I just say things because I think they're evidently true. Like, I'm not trying to get a rise out of anyone. 
Uh, look, Gary, I think there's a place for you on the show. I want you to know that. I, I respect your opinions. I think a lot of them are wild, but I enjoy them. I enjoy the back and forth. Well, I, I do the best I can. Now, let me ask you this. How are your eyes after staring directly into the solar eclipse? My eyes are fine. I yeah. lived to tell about it. I, I didn't even have the little spots. I didn't see any spots. You know, you look in the sun. So you feel good. Yeah. Did you ever play Little League Baseball, Jake? I did. I was a hell of a second baseman. They called me the Robinson Cano in my Little League team. Did they really? Cano no. was like the one Yankee. Oh, okay. was- Cano was like the one Yankee I, I liked. Him and Mo. I, I don't really, I hate every other Yankee kind of. But it, what do you mean? Cano was, is a New York Mets legend. He, he was, but even before he was a, a Mets legend. Uh, he had the one good year with the Mets too, the COVID year, the, the short year. He was really good. Yeah, because he was on the, on the roids probably. Hey, man. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. He was like 40 years old at the time, right? That's right. Why do you think he was good all of a sudden? And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there too. Robinson Cano, best second baseman I've ever seen in my life. In his prime, he was a Hall of Famer, and then his career fell off when he signed the deal. It did, but he's not gonna make the Hall of Fame because of the steroid stuff. Correct. But between offense, defensively, the guy used to get to the other side of of second base, throw across his body, and throw a strike. It's like this guy's got a right fielder's or a shortstop's arm as a second baseman. And he hits 35 homers and hits 320. Like, he was the best second baseman I ever saw in my life. Now, can you give me a, a classic, whatever you do? With I don't, it just, uh, I, I can't do it on demand. It just kind of, it just kind of happens organically. Knockouts don't matter if you land enough jabs. Yeah, ladies, you can, you can do my music. <laughs> Gary's a good sport, man. I love Gary. Gary, you're the man. I look forward to beating you hopefully at a game this year. Bra- Brian writes in with a super chat. We need to make a new Shadow Realm or Wall of Shame category for all of the media Jets haters. Canty, Wright, Cowherd, Ballas, Sharp. Shannon's not as bad as the first three you mentioned. If there's a Jet, if there's a Hall of Fame of Jet haters, Chris Canty's in it, Colin, Colin Cowherd's in it, Nick Wright's in it. I, 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 Those would be the inaugural class in my mind. Those three. Keith Olbermann would be in it, but he's a wacko. He doesn't even count anymore. What a joke that guy's life has become. Yeah, I mean, but if we're doing a, you know, Hall of Fame of Jet Hate, maybe we'll do that as a video over the summer or something. Or like June when we need content. But we'll do, <laughs> we should have done this for March Madness, but we had too much going on with free agency. A bracket of Jet Haters. And everyone votes to see who moves on. We could do, we could do that in June or something. We'll come up with something. But yeah, I mean, I, Colin Coward, I think, would be the one seed because, I mean, you could say whatever you want about what Chris Canty said. Chris Canty didn't say this, at least. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it'd be right there. Uh, let's see. Oh, a legend's on the line. How did I miss this? Ladies and gentlemen, the Lup man, Luppy. What's up, Luppy? Hey, legend. I like that. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> we love you, Luppy. I've never laughed my ass off so much as I have in this last couple of months. And I thought it was the off season. It's just your channel growing, Jake. And it's just it's crazy. I'm laughing my ass off every day. It's, it's the callers, I, man. It's not me. It's, I like the it's, boxes of tissue laughing so hard. This is great. I love it. Yeah. Um, and finally, John's you. Doing this oh, there's my wife in the background here. <laughs> it sounds like she doesn't like you calling into the show. All right. So I'm just going to say Yankees. Right. Yep. Islanders are coming on. Right. Knicks are coming on. Right. Jets are coming on. This is our time right now. This is our time, Jake. I feel it. I feel it coming up and let the haters hate, and we're going to freaking win. I really love it. I know it's going to happen, but I feel it, Jake. Do you, don't you feel it, Jake? I, you feel I, it? Your I, channel I is growing. It's I, crazy. I love it. Everything's going up the world. Oh, let's go, Jake. I feel. I do feel good about the Jets, Luffy. I do. I, I think we're in for a good season. I do. I don't know if they're winning the Super Bowl. I'm not going to go that far. I think we're going to have a good season, though. I do. I do. I felt that last year, but no one could have predicted the Rodgers injury. I I feel good. I think the Yankees are going to be one of the best teams in the league. I do. Especially with the way their pitching staff has played so far. 
You know, the Islanders, if they can get in, you get in, you get in anything can happen. All right. That's all that matters in hockey. It's a crapshoot. And the Knicks, look, I mean, Brunson is a superstar. He should be first team all NBA. You look at this Knicks team, there's no reason why they can't get to a conference finals now that OG's back. Losing Randall is huge. All the pressure, though, is on the Celtics if they were to match up there. Ladies and gentlemen, there are legends, and then there's this guy, a secret agent, the Dark Knight of this program. Dark Knight Steve joins us now. Hello, Dark Knight Steve. Hello there. Greetings from Philly. Philly? Yeah, I'm slumming it down here. I'm uh, here for work for a few days, protecting the people. Uh, <laughs> you know, I saw the Liberty Bell, stepped over the uh, people sleeping on the streets, mm. took in the smell of marijuana and piss in the streets. It's been a great time here in Philly. I haven't gotten hit by a battery yet, so that's good. That's good. Uh, Have you boots I'm wearing Jets green, but it's Bucky's. Hey, I love the Bucky shirt, let me tell you. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, great show today. Loving all this uh, Chris Canty hate. Uh, big fan of ESPN Morning Radio. Um, Canty's bad. I mean, Evan Cohn, I've liked him since he was here uh, on in West Palm. Michelle's great. Uh, he's just he's just a, a mess waiting to happen. And uh, I've truly loved all the bashing on Chris Canty today. Um, so it's been a good show. And uh, since I was here getting some government per diem, I figured I would – be a little like Robin Hood and share the wealth with uh, subscriptions with my fellow Asmaniacs. So uh, again, just want to call in and, and uh, appreciate the show. Uh, I've been away from the family a couple of days, but watching the show has kind of made me a little less homesick. So uh, I want to say thanks to everyone out there and thank you for the for the content and uh, go Jets. Steve, you're the man. Uh, stay in touch. All right. Always great to hear from Dark Knight Steve. He doesn't call often, but when he does, he always brings the positive vibes, which we appreciate, especially if you're a Jet fan. And it's typically the opposite. As we all know, uh, Dylan writes in, I guess you got to be active to get gifted memberships. I'm never active. So I wish there was a way to pick who could get a membership. It's my biggest gripe with the membership process. It's based on an algorithm on how many videos you like on my channel, how often you comment, how often you watch. Like, it, like you could be gifted one, Dylan, by just watching. But you said you're never active. If you liked every video, you got a shot. Even if you just write every show, hey, hit the like button, everyone, and that's your only comment. I think I think the, the algorithm takes that into account. But, I mean, we got incredible memberships given out today. 35 in a show? Are you kidding me? 35. That's nuts. A membership is five bucks a person. Do the math. That's how great this audience is. Andrew says it's raining subs because of Jake's amazing audience. Yeah, tough to argue, man. Tough to argue with that. I want to do something nice for the audience. If you're just tuning in, we're doing a giveaway on my Instagram page. It's easy. You follow me on Instagram. Follow at Jake Asman Show too while you're there. And I'll put your name in a random name selector. And we're going to give away a Gus Buster umbrella to someone in honor of the Masters taking place starting tomorrow. I did place a futures bet, by the way, on Gus Buster user Brooks Kepka at plus 1,600. I think I got Brooks at. So that's my one Masters bet I've made. William says, hit the like button every show. Amen. Amen. Luppy's been a channel member for one month. I will always be a member and call in even if I need to be in the doghouse. Yeah, your wife was uh, not thrilled that you were, uh, as she said, on the stupid effing video show. We got to win her over, Luppy. I got you. Let me talk to her. Like I talked to Bonesy's wife. We got Bonesy out to Vegas. So I had one conversation with Mrs. Bonesy. JT says, if you ain't liking the video, what are you doing? Well, we only have 218 likes and there's 300 people in here. So some of you are not liking the video. I know that's not you, JT. You get it. Peter says, Jake just got back from Florida full of jet haters. Sickening. They're going to learn, Peter. They're going to learn. Aaron Rodgers will not be denied this season. Tom says, Jake is the wife whisper. How has Tom not been gifted a membership? Tom, you're one of the most creative, funny commenters. How We got to make that right somehow. I don't know. This is what I mean. Like, I would personally just gift Tom a membership. But the last time I gave out gifting memberships, Alan got one. We saw that one. Like, crazy.
MJR says Volpe leading off tonight. I got to be honest. I don't love the Yankees moving him there. And Volpe's been the best player in baseball so far. Why mess with it, though? They're 10 and 2. Because you're playing the Marlins, you're like, ah, let's try it. Like, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. And look, I, maybe I'm just suspicious. I'm a baseball fan, all that. But like, I don't know. Anthony Volpe is cooking right now in, in the five or the six spot. He's driving in runs. Just leave him there. I don't know. I get why they want him to be the leadoff hitter. That's where he's eventually going to be. He gets on base. He sees pitches. He steals bases. He's a superstar. Volpe is, you know, I hate to put the Derek Jeter label on him, but how he plays is what we saw early on from Jeter. Like he's taking that type of step. He eventually will be the Yankee leadoff hitter, I hope, for the next 10 to 15 years. I mean, he's 21, 22 years old. So that's the plan. But I don't know. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Just leave him where he's been. So I hope this doesn't lead to a slump or anything. I hope he has a good game tonight so he doesn't become mental. But I, I know Glaber hasn't been great, but, like, they're winning. So I don't, I don't know. Whatever. They, if Strowman picks well tonight and Stanton and Soto keep doing their thing, they'll be fine. They'll win. But it, you, you know what I mean. I, but both so good, it probably won't even matter. But I don't know. My, my, my initial reaction to that is, like, they're 10-2. To like, they don't need to do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, Dylan Grace has taken matters into his own hands. He said, I'm not going to wait for someone to give me a membership. I'm just going to become an Asmaniac. So to that, Dylan, I say thank you, and I hit this. Thanks for your support, my man. Appreciate you. Dano writes in with a super chat. Dano, I noticed you haven't called in since you farted all over the air last week. Place Jet Future Bets to pay for the celebratory meetup. That's true. That's true. I'll say this. If you think the Jets are going to win the division, you're better off betting it now because you're not going to get better odds than you will right now. Obviously, if Rodgers gets hurt week one, the odds will change, but you know what I mean? Like, I think the Jets are winning the division. So you're going to get the best odds now rather than post-draft. Omari says, LaShawn McCoy saying Josh is better than A-Rod is poop. Let me say this. That's fine if, if if that's the take. I think by the end of the year, Aaron's going to make that a real combo. Because I, I want to see what Josh Allen is now without Stephon Dix. I mean, he's got right now Curtis Samuel as his number one. Let's see. I think Allen's phenomenal. And he right now is better than Rodgers, if you want to argue that. Fine. I think by the end of the year, it's a real conversation, though, is, would be my point. I think it's close. Even if you think Allen's better, I think it's close with Rodgers. Um, Moshe says, tuning in first time today. Thoughts from the Isles game last night. Also, since when was Lavaliette a baby? Uh, anyone who thinks Adam Pellick put that hit on Mika on purpose is a moron. I'm sorry. All right, if you're a Ranger fan, I get it. You hate the Islanders. I hate your team, too. That's not it. That's not a dirty hit. The hit at the end with Dobson, fair, all right? But it's no different than what Rempe does to people. Like, come on, man, all right? The Islanders won the game. They'll play again on Saturday. Uh, the, the officiating did not decide the game last night. The Islanders were better. Barlamov was probably the best player on the ice. That's why he was the game's first star. Those are my thoughts. It was a great Islander win. I'm glad they're playing as well as they are. I still don't think they're... Gonna go on a run to a Stanley Cup, but just get into the playoffs and you never know. But it was fun being at UBS last night. The atmosphere was great. A roll says Jake's an Islander fan, didn't know that. I'm guessing this is sarcasm. Uh FPP says Dano call in. Rat Diddy says, Dano's so afraid of Gator work now. Yeah, I think Dano's afraid of Gator impersonating him. Uh, Super Chats, keep them coming, baby. Appreciate Omari for this one. He writes in, according to Joy Taylor and LaShawn, Bills will win the conference. Complete BS. All these media members seem to hate the Jets and A-Rod and our coach. From wrong. No one had the Ravens as the one seed a year ago at this time. Fly under the radar. It's a good spot to be. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with that. 
fly under the radar. But when Chris Canty says just absolutely ridiculous things, I mean, we're going to call it out. If they want to make the playoffs, they should draft a quarterback at 10. Okay, Chris. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Comments, questions, super chats. Michael says, Jake, can we see the t-shirt you're wearing? Sure, Michael. That's all you're going to see. Isles Meetups Houston. Shout out to all my Islander fans who live in Houston. We have a meetup group. So I'm wearing the t-shirt from that. Uh, Peter says, Yankees going to win it all. Chemistry is all there. They got to stay healthy, Peter. The balance they have in the lineup, though, is tremendous. What Soto brings is obvious. Volpe taking a step forward changes everything. Stanton, look, he's going to have moments where he looks like the worst player in the league. He's going to have moments like right now where he's one of the best players in the game. So, we'll see. Um... Craig says, if Gator hasn't impersonated you, you don't exist. That's true. Pittsburgh Mike says, hey, don't they leak some of the NFL schedule early? Hope we hear about our week one matchup. I bet we will. We'll be live as soon as it gets announced, assuming I'm able to. Last year, we found out. Dramax says, Jake Islanders won, but they were not better. Rangers outplayed them second and third period. Okay, well, maybe don't show, don't, maybe show up for the first five minutes of the first period then if you want to play that game. Because last I checked, it was 3 nothing after 1. And it could have been a lot more. You had a penalty shot in the opening minute of the game. So if Barzell put that in, it could have been 4 nothing or worse. So I don't want to hear it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Comments, questions, super chats, cut the line here. Want to make sure that we once again uh, continue to encourage everyone to get over on the Patreon. If you haven't, we got something cooking up, by the way, for the NFL draft. I got something fun I'm going to be announcing in the coming days. We're going to be doing another one of those draft contests, but you have to be either a channel member or a Patreon member to get first access to it. Big fella writes in. He's got a super chat for the people. Here's his question. We need a backup running back. Any names you're interested in? Yeah, I, I'm interested in guys in the draft. I'm also interested in Zeke Elliott, Kareem Hunt, J.K. Dobbins. I think if the Jets want to compliment Brees, they probably got a big physical bruiser. Look for the Jets to use one of their fourth-round picks on a running back. I have a weird feeling. Family says, Isles versus Rangers is what New York City needs. Let's go Rangers. I mean, the Rangers played the Devils last year in the first round, and that was intense. Um, let's see. Did we miss any Super Chats? I want to make sure we didn't. Those always take priority. Appreciate you guys for the support. Hit the like button. We're at 248 right now. Can we get to 300? Can we keep it rolling here? Guitarist says, just saw Kuiper as has taken Bowers. Don't even get me started. He's been dead set on that for weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now is a man who loves Aaron Rodgers more than anyone. BMAC is up next. Hello, BMAC. Hey, Jake. Um, I'm going to say something that might shock all y'all, but I'm going to say it right now because I need to get off my chest. Chris County, shut the fuck up. Uh, please stop. All right. Stop being bitter and jealous because Aaron Rodgers is a better player than you ever will be. All right, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Chris, you going to the Hall of Wackos because you are a wacko that spews nonsense. All right, nonsense that makes no sense. Oh, and by the way, 
people want to talk about. I, I'm, I'm so sick of people talking about Rogers was terrible his last year in Green Bay. For the exact truth, if Zach Wilson had 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and 3,700 yards, the Zach Wilson truthers will be saying he is in the Hall of Fame. All right. Rogers said down years for him or career years for other quarterbacks. And he's right. Aaron's worst year for y'all is really the best quarterback that, that uh, I mean, uh, is really the best season that that quarterback has ever had. All right. So I'm tired of people saying Aaron Rodgers was terrible, like he was god awful. No, he wasn't. All right. He was an MVP his last year with us, but he was still above average. And, and, and again, Rodgers down years are people's career years. Chris County, please be educated. I'm assuming he's an educated man. I'm assuming. All right. Start talking like an educated man and not a stupid man all the time. B Mac, I say job well done to you, sir. What a rant. What a rant. Hit the like button for B Mac. Big time. Big time. Talk your bleep, BMAC. Put that Rogers jersey on next time we sent you. Luppy says, can we super chat some money for BMAC to get his cable back up? He's protesting the cable being on out of spite because he doesn't like Allen. I love it. We've had some good rants this episode, and most of them haven't even been me. Tremendous. VR checks in. The birthday man. Clickbait Candy wants to be Stephen A. when he grows up. Effin' joystick. Amen. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! It's true. Craig says, this is a rant episode. That's right. Call in. What grinds your gears? Rat Diddy says, Alan F's everything up. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> Tom D has checked in, folks. He's been an Asmaniac for one month. He's using his free super chat to celebrate. Just got home from work and hopped on here. Chris can't use his brain, can GFH, last word is himself. And shout out to Dark Knight Steve for the membership. Love that. Love that. Big time. Um. Rat Diddy says, BMAC keeps getting spicier and spicier. I love it. Yeah, fired up BMAC is as good as it gets. That's what we need. Um, let's see. I'm sure we didn't miss any comments here. Gator writes in, are the Jets waiting to see how many shekels they have left before signing a veteran running back? I think that's part of it. I think they might use the draft to, to sign a to draft a running back too. Maybe they're like, "Why are we paying three, four million to Zeke when we can get a guy who will count one million against our cap in the fourth round? We think is just as good." I think that's part of it. Michael says, "I'll take Zeke. Played pretty well last year. Veteran can block in the passing game. I think whoever they sign has to be a really good pass protector." Because if you're going to spell Brees Hall and Rodgers as your quarterback, you can't have Dalvin Cook stunk in pass protection. He stunk at everything, but especially bad in pass protection. So I'm with you. Last chance to get in here. Brian says, "Let time to uh, time to rant. Let's get ranty, not canty." Oh, Brian, hit the laugh track. <laughs> Like that. I really should have hit the rim shot. I hit a little pun. I'll see myself out. All right, back to the call as we go. I mean, we've had every legend pretty much call in this show, it feels like. The big fella is on the line. Big fella, what do you got? What's up, Jake? Um, I have a I have a question for you. I'm you know, I'm big on getting Fontano and everything, you know, because I think he's like the need that you know, the Jets really, really need – we need some safety on the offensive line. There's there's 50 memberships on the line too. You're damn right there is. <laughs> um, so, 
I was on another show last night, and they were trying to justify taking a wide receiver like if a Dunze is available, okay? I can see that, but the rationale of them saying, oh, well, you know, if Garrett Wilson goes down, who do we have and stuff like that? My point was that if Brees goes down, who do we have after that? You know, our main objective this season should be keeping Aaron Rodgers upright. That that's that's my that's my uh, feeling on it. I agree. And, I just think Adunze is such a tremendous talent, big fella. That yeah, I'd love Fatanu, but I think the Jets are just going to have Adunze ranked so much higher, and they're going to feel like they could find a receiver. Or excuse me, they're gonna, they're going to feel like they could add more veteran offensive line depth, like McGovern and Bakhtiari, Donovan Smith, and they could kind of piece it together that way. I think that would be the thought process if they went receiver at ten. I see because. The way the way I see it is like this wide receiver draft is just as just as deep, you know. So I mean, there's some good good wide receivers that are gonna be around in the third round too. I mean, and if we trade back, you know, we could even pick one in the second round and you know have it that way. That that's my preference. If they don't, if they can't get one of the big three receivers, I, I'm on board with that. I just think I I think a Dune's a special. Like I, I yeah. think you put him with Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, and Mike Williams, and you just get average offensive line play, which I think it should be better than average if unless everyone gets hurt again. Like I, I think the Jets could have a top five offense in the league with Brees, Garrett, Mike Williams, Adunze, and plus Mike Williams on a one year deal. So you're gonna need weapons. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And I mean this guy Knoble, he's you know, we we should pick him up too. You know, I mean he's he sounds like a good he sounds like a good player out of college. You know? I, so. I, I take I you know I probably would trade my next three drafts to get up to number one to take Canova. You'd pull it. You'd pull a Ricky Williams up. I, I, I would. I would trade this year's draft, next year's draft, the following draft if it meant I could get Canova. I mean, he could play every position. I hear you. I hear you. Well, anyway, Jake, have a great show, man, and uh, go Jets. Big fella, appreciate you. From big fella to Johnny. Hello, Johnny. What up, Jake? Hey, man. Want to ask you a quick question? First off. Bro, this episode is one of the best, man. This one's great, dude. All the content's been put out there. But I wanted to ask in regards of Kareem Hunt, right? Some Another vet that nobody's really – we haven't kind of really been talking about. And I wanted to know, I mean, what's the reasoning? Why do you think he hasn't been signed yet? I mean, I feel like he's another piece that could possibly come over with us and have that vet presence in the backfield. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that, you know, and let me know what you think. I think it's a cost thing, if anything. I mean, I mean, the Jets maybe have done their homework on him. We don't know. But I think it's it's cost-related, if anything. I mean, I, I've mentioned Kareem Hunt when I've talked about the other veteran running backs being available. So I, I would take him. I think I think if the Jets do add a veteran running back, though, it's not happening until after the draft because they're going to see what happens there first. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? You're right. I didn't even think about that because I'm all just like, we need to fill that hole, fill the hole before the draft type of thing. So now you're right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, man. Well, appreciate you, bro. And um, hey, just to give you a heads up, New York Jets, Florida. He's a mole for Tampa, bro. So just be careful on what you say to him about the Jets. <laughs> He's a it's mole for Tampa. Johnny, appreciate you. I, I think at this point, I'd be surprised if they made any other signings before the draft. I think because of the comp pick formula being what it is, if you wait till after the draft, you could sign players without having to uh, deal with uh, comp picks going the other way. I think you'll get a Bakhtiari or Donovan Smith signing post-draft, potentially a Zeke or a Kareem Hunt or J.K. Dobbins signing by the Jets post-draft, maybe even an Ashton Davis signing post-draft. There's still moves they'll make, but I think at this point it'd be surprising if it's before the draft. Rat Diddy says, where is Charles today? It's a great question. We have not had a Charles call today. All right, we all want to know where he's at. True. Um, let's see. Reese says, I love this rant episode. Hell yeah. It has been a fun program, folks. Peter says, Neighbors is a game changer. Yeah, I, I think Neighbors is Garrett Wilson. I think he's a star. I like him and Marvin Harrison and Adunze. It's why I would take him. 
if any of them are somehow there at 10. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner has just been paid for, courtesy of the great Tom D, who said, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay it forward. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Okay. Uh. Tom D delivering the D, folks. Been riding off two free memberships. Still doesn't let me gift them, so you can add some for me, Jake. That'd be cool. Tom, you are the man, my man. You are the man. Let's uh, let's take some of the super chat right now and let's gift it. You're right. All right. Let's 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 pay it forward. I don't know why you you haven't been able to gift it yourself, Tom. But I'm going to take some of the super chats here and I'm going to gift some memberships. So stand by, people. I got to open up a different browser to make this happen. But Tom, incredibly nice gesture by you. We will make sure that we turn your fifty dollars into channel memberships right away. Stand by. Hold on, hold on. A lot happening at once right now. Got a lot. Of, I got my new monitor here. Got a bunch of different browsers. Need things to load, but when it does load, I promise you, we will take good care of the Asmaniacs. Uh, just hold on. This will be worth it, people. Hold on. Let me get the live chat up here. Uh, let's see. All right. Membership gifting. Here we go. Five memberships. We're doing it. Fire it off. Here we go. This is from Tom D. Tom D has gifted the following people five memberships. Mike Rotonda, Kikuchi, Michael 6789 Jets, and Jets fan 0. Five one plus Josh Ellis, courtesy of Tom D. You have just received a channel membership. That's awesome. Shout out to you, Tom. Shout out to you, Tom D. Coming through. So we came through with five memberships. Last chance to get in. We've gone for ninety minutes, but I mean, this has been a fun show. I don't have dinner till six forty-five, so I got time. Let's see. Pittsburgh Mike says, for the record, I was membershipless for one day before I was gifted another. Love you all. Amazing. Uh, let's see. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? This show is epic. Folks. The big fella just said, hold up now. Hold up. I got 20 memberships I want to gift. Oh, my goodness. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, uh. Folks, this is an inc- It's just a random Wednesday show. 60 memberships have been gifted during this episode. Unreal. The following 20 people just got a membership. Keem Brown, Kyle, Boring Sober Guy, Ronald Perry, E. Kempler 924, Just for Fun, Beth Page Chris, Paul Klein, Midnight Mike Show, Finnegan's Flight Crew. Uh, oh, my God. There's more names here. Hold on. Hold on. There's too many names. Uh, Doan's Syndrome, Alexander Brown, Ethan Hunt, Jay. Let's keep going. There's more names. Financial Rx. Luis Cardova, Torellis, a Jet fan. Holy bleep, folks. Unreal. Unreal, man. I, I mean, it just this audience is incredible. Incredible. Uh, th- this is going to be me at dinner tonight. As Andrew writes in the comments here, it is a sub tsunami. <laughs> it's unreal, man. The big fella has gifted 20 memberships. They don't call him the big fella for nothing, says Dark Knight Steve. Unreal. Unreal. Uh, wow. 
Make sure we didn't miss any super chats here. Incredible. Shout out to our audience, man. Big fella, uh, 20 memberships. Tom D gave us five. Let's keep running through. Let's do a quick little recap here. Dylan signed up. Appreciate you, Dylan. Craig gifted another 10. Dark Knight Steve, another five. Addison gifted five. Dark Knight Steve gifted another 10. Craig gifted another five earlier to get us rolling today. That total is 61 memberships. Terrell A. Jet Fan writes in with a super chat saying, Thank you, big fella. I have so many mocks with us drafting Brock Bowers. Smoke screens are likely. You see so many mocks. Let me clarify. Look, I would still be surprised if the Jets took Bowers. I would. I think the Jets are trading out, trading up. And if they trade out, they take a lineman or a receiver. If they trade up, they take a receiver. If they stick and pick, they take a lineman. I don't see Bowers at 10. I could be dead wrong. I see it as more of a smokescreen than the Jets picking him. I think ideally they want a team to think they're going to take Bowers and try and trade up in front of the Jets to take him or call the Jets and see if they can do a trade. Oh my God. It, this this is unbelievable. Ro Delgado just gifted 10 memberships. Holy crap. Oh my God. Money. Putting this on, on just repeat. Holy crap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank this audience enough. Holy, holy crap. <laughs> Oh, my God. The following 10 people just got memberships. John, G Money, Steve Smith, Austin Bass, Lenny Malice, We Got the Sauce, Freak Turd Zero, Mark Riss, Dovis Mateo. Thank your Lord and Savior, Ro Delgado, who just made it rain and gifted 10 more memberships. Money, 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 money. Man, banner show, folks. We've gained 71 members. We need, we now have more than enough to add a new emoji. E if you have an emoji idea, email me, asmanjake at gmail, and I'll go through the best ones, and that will be our new emoji. Hennessy emoji has been suggested. A Bobby Midnight emoji has been suggested. Gary getting knocked out has been suggested. I mean, it's out of control. For, oh, my God. Craig in the Czech mother effing republic, baby. Holy crap. Show me the money. Show me the money. Money, money, money. money. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like I got to quote boy great. I, I, I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. The following... 20 people have just received an As Maniac membership. Mitt Flair, Just Endure the Suffering, Shane McGarry, Astros Off the Chain, Jug Artist 14, J-E-T-S, Pauly, Papa Yeti, NY Cursor, Frank Yeager, Luke Morrell, Joe Rano, uh, Rock and Rant, Jetpack 615, JK Primetime, Kakuka Lake Jet Fan, Sal Pizzuto. This is all from Craig, by the way. Steve V, all received memberships. Laís Niedermeyer, John Pertucci. Oh, my God, Craig, you are a legend, man. Zalix also received a membership from Craig. It's just, it, this is unreal. And as I'm reading that, oh, my God, like this, it's like a battle of the titans for members. Oh, holy crap. Jesus, God. I'm going to have to cancel my dinner. We got too many names to read. Dark Knight Steve has just gifted five more memberships. I, at this point, I'm just playing drops. I forget the money ones. I'm giving you guys Joe Dogan. <laughs> Dark Knight Steve has gifted. Oh, my God. I just lost the names here. It's just Lowski's got. Oh, Lowski. Come on, bro. This is crazy. Joe Price, AZ Jets, Rex Ryan. Thanks, Rex. To Hurtis Russell, William Tukowitz, all gifted memberships to Asmania by Dark Knight Steve. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to play a money sounder for this next guy here. This is just crazy. You know what I'm going to play when King Lowski decides to gift 10 memberships? You know what I'm going to play? Play a little of this. Hey, Charles, I need some more of that chicken soup. 
But more importantly, I'm going to play this, Slowski. The following 10 people were just gifted memberships by our king. And make sure you hit that King Lowski emoji. It's the least you could do as he gifted you a membership. Matt Whalen, Little Hip, 24NY Jets 31, Donnie Alford, Travis Prem, Prem, Steve Rodina. Oh, my God. R.A. Chemnitz, Lee Van, Jordan Victor, Nick T, R.A. Chemnitz, I think I already read that name, but who cares? You remember? Unbelievable. I can't keep up, folks. This is un freaking believable how generous our audience is tonight. And then Dan, the Jet fan, just gifted someone a membership as well. Shout out to Dan. Way to pay it forward, Dan. Dan, you got a membership for the following person. Let's see. Uh, Dan, your membership went to... You did it at the same time as Lowski, so it's all blending in. Uh, Nick... Nick T got your membership, Dan. So, Nick, thank Dan the Jet fan. Unreal. 122 channel memberships have just been paid for by the audience. Unbelievable. Thank you, guys. Wow. What a show. I guess we should do more shows just talking about uh, Chris Canty's horrendous takes. Luppy, unreal. Just get the five more memberships. Uh, it's just crazy. Money, 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 money. Folks, we are now up to 122 members. It is literally raining subs in here. Luffy has gifted memberships to John, Austin S., Kelvin Joseph, John B., uh, Joe M., Phil, Tony DeFlippo. Uh, it just, this is, wait a second. I can't keep up. I don't even know who got hope. I, I I can't even keep up. This is crazy. It's I, I don't even know who got what. There's too many memberships. My computer is exploding. I sound like Trump and there's too much winning comment. That's hilarious. Uh, Luppy gifted five. Big fella, as of two minutes ago, gifted another 20. Good God. I'm just going to put this on loop. I, I just, I'm speechless. Brian says it's raining subs. It is. It really is. If you don't have a sub by now, I don't have to tell you. King Lowski's back with another 10. Unbelievable. King Lowski's gifted 10 memberships, folks. Uh, it's just... What is there to say? Please, please, it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Please, please. <laughs> it's too much winning. We can't take it anymore. Oh, it's just, it's, this is unreal. I've never seen this before. 142 channel memberships in counting. Unbelievable. I can't keep up. If you got a membership, thank who sent it to you because there's too many names. All right. I got the monitor here on my screen, right? And I'm trying to le read the list of names and I can't do it. All right, there's too many memberships that are being gifted, but you guys are amazing. Thank you. Unbelievable. Unreal. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now is someone that I believe gifted a membership to start this off earlier in the show. Joining us right now is Addison M, who gifted five at 501 Eastern today. And look what since. What's up, Addison? Jay. Addison. What's going on, Jake? Just wanted to say what's up over here on the west side, L.A. Welcome you aboard, man. Right? Yeah, you, so turn turn the TV down because you're we're live on this, on StreamYard. Shit. Yeah, you're a little delayed. I'm coming from my phone, so I just wanted right. to pop in and say what's up real quick. Shout out to King Lowski. You're the one that got me going on my first sub back in the day. And uh, it's lonely out here in L.A. as a Jets fan. So thank you for keeping me entertained, even though sometimes I miss the morning shows. And just so you know, I'm not a fake one. You know, we got all all the apparel back in the day. My so, uh, Jake, wow. thanks for keeping this lonely stoner out here entertained. <laughs> and this one out here is for uh, Lowski and Ricky. 
Hey. <laughs> I love it, Addison. Great call, man. Great first call. A real one. I love that, man. Unreal. Unreal. Dan says, need a Gustbuster umbrella because it's raining. Good God. You ain't wrong about that. Ladies and gentlemen, another five memberships has been gifted. Mike has stepped up for the people. It's just unreal. Money, 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 money. Uh, the following five people, let's see if we can get the names for this one, if it's calmed down just slightly here. The following five people from Mike received channel memberships. Interface LTD, Seth McDermott, Timothy Moore, Justin Davies, Sean, all received channel memberships. You are now officially are as maniacs. Holy crap. VR has just stepped up. I mean, what else is there to say? It's crazy. VR, five more memberships. Holy crap. Un. Real. VR gifted memberships too. Sean Collins Cruz, Death Jet 11, Project Prospect with Dom C, Zach Minton, Rob D. Incredible. Uh, I mean, speechless. Absolutely speechless. <laughs> wow. Craig says, people in my hotel can hear me laughing. Yeah, I keep trying to end the show and there keeps being more memberships. Like, I. I mean, we have the best fans, man. 152 memberships have been gifted during the show. I believe that's a, uh, I believe that's a course record. It has to be. I, I, I mean, maybe the Tyron Smith show when he signed on that Friday night. What happens if everyone in the chat gets a membership? What happens then? <laughs> what does YouTube do then? Can they give me some extra ones to give out for later? Boomtown says your community is world class. It's the best. There's a, there's no better audience, man. Low Temple Fade with a super chat. His first one for five dollars, but there's nothing on it. Unreal. Andrew says the girls on OnlyFans are jealous of the Jake Assman show. You bet your ass they are. That's right. We don't need fake Assman for this show today, Gator. That's right. Unreal. Unreal. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to the audience. Just incredible. Show that was going to end after an hour. Just kept going. Rhett Diddy says, imagine when we win the Super Bowl, the amount of rain making that's going to happen. I'll probably faint during that show if God willing, I get to do a post game after a Jet Super Bowl. Oh my God. That'll be the greatest night of my life. If I could remember it, I'll be so in shock and awe. Unreal. Unreal. Jet fans are the best, man. It's just no, no way to put it. Uh, Brandon says, gift Canty a membership. <laughs> can, we, can we gift them one and then say, psych! Ladies and gentlemen, Ali did it the hard way. He just signed up to become an Asmaniac. Love that. Dano says, Jake, how many members you got now? Well, we got 153 from this show alone, but I don't know how many total. It's not on my screen. Weed says, shock and awe equals drunk on Henny. Probably. Andrew says, Jake's going to send Canty a, a, a gift basket. <laughs> Maybe I should. Big fella checks in. How many members don't have memberships in here? Well, if you're watching live right now and you still don't have a membership. That's tough to do. How does Ricky not have a membership? Ricky calls every day. <laughs> Ricky, if I could specifically gift you a lifetime membership right now, I would do it. How? I don't understand the YouTube algorithm, man. Ricky watches every show. He's always calling. How is he not a, how is he not a member? That's unreal. Hey, everyone thank Chris Candy for the memberships because without him, the show wouldn't have happened. 
Alan says, could someone gift someone get Dave and Hawk a membership? I'm good without Hawk getting one. Dave deserves one. Lee says you have to click a setting to accept. That's got to be what it is. Ricky, your internet is probably so bad that you don't have the setting on to receive memberships. You obviously would get one the second you have that on. You don't have the setting turned on. That has to be it. Or YouTube hates Florida State players. I don't know. Guitarist has gifted a membership to the following person. Writer. Unreal. Poor Ricky. We got to get Ricky centered out. Congrats to Ryder. Guitarist, excellent job out of you. I think Boy Green's in the audience. He wrote, what a historic show. And it, this has been a historic show, there's no doubt. All right? There's no I'm doubt. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. I mean, I, I, I'm losing my gosh darn bananas this show. Ricky, fix your settings, says Mike. Yeah, this is obviously a settings issue for Ricky. Um, Low Temp Fade says, ha ha, Epic Jake, I got to send another super. Keep cooking up fire jet content. There we go. We figured out how to do the super chats there. I got you. Thank you, Low Temp. Appreciate your support, my man. Appreciate everyone. Well, Hawk has just gifted a membership. He says, praise me. Wow. I'll tell you what we won't do. See ya. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. I'm just kidding, Hawk. I'll put you in stupid town, but I won't send you out for five minutes. I'll praise your generosity. Well done. Let's see who got your membership, Hawk. It's like blood money, but it does count. Dorian H., you could kiss Hawk's feet. He gifted you a membership. <laughs> uh, I, I I truly got about five or ten minutes left. I'm, but this has been such a fun show. I'll stay out a little longer. Uh, Gator had a funny comment about Ricky. I wanted to read, but I just lost it because there's so many comments. This is crazy. Hit the like button, please. Let's see here. Gator wrote in. Ricky needs to open the window to let all the smoke out so we could see the screen where the membership button is. That could be it, too. That could be it. We praised you, Hawk. I hope you're happy. Uh, let's see. Dano says, on a PC, tune into one of Jake's live videos. Click join. Click more. Gift settings. Confirm you'd like to opt in by turning on allow gifts. All right, Ricky, do exactly what Dano just said. Alan says, Jake, how much is your date charge for the hour? Ha! Classic Alan. So classic. Ha, ha, ha. I'm Alan. I make funny with my mouth. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. I'm Alan. Uh, uh. Look at me. Uh. Just shut the f up. I did not ask for the dumb opinion that came out of your ass. So shut the f up. Anyway, wrap up here shortly. Let's see. Um, Boomtown says, Jake, if you treat Gary's mom well tonight, let her order anything she wants off the menu. Not always, man. We love Gary's mom. Phenom says, thanks for the gift. Phenom, I don't know who gifted it to you, but someone did. Ricky says, YouTube hates me. It's okay because I love to see my fellow fans get them. Ricky, if you just turn on gift options, I think you'll get one the second someone gives a membership. It's If it's truly based on who engages with the show, you're going to get one in a second. First State Jets has just gifted another five. Did Ricky get one here? Ricky, did you update the gift settings? First State Jets has gifted. This is actually insane. Kyle Logan has received a membership. AFK has received a membership. Cody Dog has received a membership. Scott K has received a membership. JT99 has received a membership. Ricky did not get one, but shout out to everyone who did. Courtesy of First State Jets, making it rain for the people. Love it. Unreal. 
Unreal. Gator writes in on an Android phone, turn the power off, throw it out the window, and then go to the Apple store and get yourself a real phone. Tell that to my dad, Gator. God. JQuest says, can't opt in. I'm clueless. King says, you have to allow gifts. Change your settings. This is just unreal. Unbelievable. Folks, someone's saying I missed another 10 from King Loski. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. King Loski gifted 10. I didn't even see it. Holy crap. Grab the O bleep bar, folks. 10 memberships by our king. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm speechless. Everyone, I'm going to give you guys a warning for this one, all right? Because you know I love all of you. Cover your ears. <laughs> oh, my God. The following 10 members just received a King Lowski as Maniac membership. Tommy Clifford, Ryan Coolness, Lorenzo Ramos, Jigaman, Garrett, Jesse Bruton, Elvin Tin Roman, David Scrodonis, Ernesto Rivera, DLB One Jets Arm, all courtesy of the King. King, I can't believe I missed this, bro. Appreciate you, man. As always. What is Lowski? Lowski's gifted. I wish I could have like a scoreboard in front of me, but it's so like convoluted how it's listed on my screen here. Lowski's gifted like 30 memberships. Big fella's gifted 30. Scott's gifted uh, 30. Tom D gifted a bunch. Uh, Craig gifted a bunch. Uh, unreal. Big fella, uh, everyone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a community we have built, folks. And Ricky still can't get one. I, Ricky, I, someone fly, someone who lives in Tampa that's a Jet fan, show up at Ricky's house and show him how to do it. We gotta get we gotta get this figured out. All right, hit the like button. You have a better chance of getting a membership. Dark Knight Steve says, Andrew Fialco emoji. Hey, someone makes a Fialco emoji. We can add it. I think we now have at least room for two emojis now that we got this many. Snowball says, can you feel the love tonight? Oh, I feel it. Dano says, Ven will be $10. I'll get Ricky a membership. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. This, is, this audience is special. Dan says, I'll drive up to Tampa from Naples. Please, someone's got to step up for Ricky here. Ricky's internet is either too crap or he's too high to figure it out, but we will get this for our guy, Ricky. All right. Unreal. By the way, that's super, according to YouTube, that super chat about Fialco from, uh, from Dark Knight Steve was his third on the live stream. That's unreal. <laughs> Gator. V Man's grandpa just got a membership and he doesn't have a phone or a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. You ain't wrong. He probably does by now. I think the only person that doesn't have a membership that regularly watches the show is Ricky. <laughs> Alan says, Jake made a week of rent tonight. A week? Alan, it's New York. That's a little generous. Craig says, a Jake the Snake emoji. Oh, baby. I'm open to that one. Email me your emojis. The only requirement from YouTube is they have to be one by one image aspect. Hennessy writes in. Did someone say a Hennessy emoji? This is to you, Hennessy. I got you. Unreal. Woo! All right. VR writes in. 
Non Jake membership equals population Ricky NY. Yeah, pretty much. At this point, it feels that way. <laughs> oh my God. All right. I think we're done. Thank you to everyone. What a show. <laughs> Two hours. The last like 45 minutes, we I don't think we've done any jet talk. It has just been straight memberships galore. <laughs> just the best audience, man. Best fans in sports are jet fans. I've said it. You've said it. We've all said it. It is true. Unreal. A couple super chats that are still coming in here at the buzzer. You guys are incredible. Weed the people says we need a weed emoji. And Paolo says dollar ninety nine Hennessy super chats. Look, if you're gonna get me to do a swig of Henny every time we get a dollar ninety nine super chat, I won't make it through a show. All right. We're gonna have to if you want a swig of Henny, we're gonna have to start the bidding at like twenty five dollars a pop. All right. I got a job to do here. Unreal. Unreal. What a show. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. If you want the rant destroying Chris Canty for his latest hit job on the Jets, check it out at the beginning of the show. And then the call started the flow. A V-man call with his grandpa. Uh, a, a Gary call for the ages. I don't even remember what happened on this show. And then just we made it rain more than like, you know, a stripper in Vegas with the memberships tonight. Good God. Anyway, thank you all for the incredible support. My name is Jake Asman. Hit the like button. You're more likely to be gifted a membership when you do that. Jet fans, you guys are the greatest. And, you know, it's funny. We talk about how great Jet fans are. I don't think there's a better example of, like, how great, like, this fan base is than the incident that happened in Vegas with one of our own. Right? We we had a Jet fan that was the Las Vegas Citizen of the Month. How did he do it? For those new to the show, here's how. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Do you guys remember there was an incident in Las Vegas where a man attacked a Clark County judge? After this happened, I said, the guy in the video is actually a listener of the show. So not the guy who basically like Troy Palomalo over like the judge dais. But the guy that is a listener of the show is the hero who tried to immediately apprehend this wacko. And yesterday, Michael Lasso, the law clerk who helped protect the Clark County judge who was attacked in court last month, was named Citizen of the Month in Vegas. You could see our guy Michael Lasso on the left there. It's a pretty cool moment for Michael, who joins us right now. What's up, Michael? <laughs> How you doing, Jake? Good to see you. Man, what's it what's it like being a hero? Oh my god, you know what I mean? It's it's so honestly it's just so surreal and so uh so humbling, truly. I never expected it to be, you know, on SNL and TikTok and Twitter and while I fly this way, right? Mm -hmm. The bear love he run behind me, he fall down. Look at him, man. That's terrible. Man, <laughs> it's really just uh just incredible to be honest. And, and that leap that that man did was pretty impressive and I think that's <laughs> part of the reason why that video has gone so crazy. Uh, I mean, the guy, like, he timed the snap perfectly, right? Like, he did the full Troy <laughs> Palomalo over the – I mean, <laughs> what goes through your mind in real time as that's happening? Like, do you even have time to think? Was it all just natural reaction? Kind of take us through what's happening there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's no time to think for sure. I mean, it, the video doesn't even do it justice just at how fast that uh, actually occurred. You know, I mean, one minute he's sitting there just talking about how, you know, he'll, he'll accept whatever the judge is willing to give him, and then the next minute he's on top of the judge. So when he initially made a run, I thought, okay, he's going for the door. Last thing I thought he was going for the judge, and I definitely didn't think he was ever going to make contact. It was so nice to the mayor. It was so nice to the city. It was such an incredible experience. And I mean, when the mayor first called me, I answered the phone, and I'm thinking to myself, who is this, the mayor? Do you have the right number? <laughs> <laughs> the video honestly doesn't even do it justice as to just how fast it really was. I mean, it, it went from just any normal day to just, you know, honestly, just, just you know, havoc. I mean, it was uh, in a blink of an eye, and there really wasn't much time to think. You just kind of react. I mean, I remember when it happened, and, like, the... The, the video was everywhere. And then you told me that was you. And I was like, what? No way. And, and I just like, I couldn't believe it, man. That, I know. You know, I wish I could have came on your show earlier, but obviously the sentencing was still going on. There were things in motion, so I just couldn't. But uh, I really appreciate you giving me a chance and coming on here. It's not every day that, you know, a listener of the show is like a legitimate hero. I mean, that's 
That's pretty cool. I mean, what ended up happening? Was he sentenced? Where, where's the guy who, you know, attacked yeah, you? So, so basically, yeah, he, he was uh, he was given the sentence he was going to get uh, originally. He's got new charges that he's facing, and that's going on in, in a different courtroom with a different judge. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of see where that goes. Can you believe that when they brought me back to court, they put a muzzle on me, man? Yeah, probably for everybody's safety. Man, I ain't bite nobody. That's <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> man. I love it. A Jet fan is a hero out in Las Vegas. And those clips of uh, Judge Allen, oh, my God. Uh, those had me dead. Oh, my God. Those are the best things I've ever seen. Uh, I don't know. I just gator bait. Those are incredible. Uh, yeah, I, I believe you've been this right here. I'd rather be the Jake Hasman heel than the Robert Sala truther any day of the week. But it's weird because I don't see myself as a heel. I think I'm a realist. I don't want to hear none of that shit you do. We don't want no damn New England to win shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, it's too good. It's too good. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you again, Jake. Michael, uh, you're the man. Appreciate you joining the show, brother. We have the best audience. We, we, I've always said it. That's as good as it gets right there.